Now I'm gonna, so I don't have to wash my pan. This just had bread on it. There's a couple more pieces. I'm gonna walk over here and just put my bread for the crostinis right on here. And pop this back in the oven. Now for this bread, I don't want it to dry out quite as much because we don't need it to absorb much flavor. I just want it to hold up a little better when we put our cheese and our onion confit on there. All right, I'm gonna mix this with the same spatula because we're just cooking in our house. It's not that big of a deal. Obviously, if there was someone who had a gluten intolerance or something like that, you wouldn't want to do that because I just cross-contaminated this with some gluten, but this is gonna go on bread, so it doesn't matter. But you want to make sure there's a lot of uh, contact with the fat in there. Then sprinkle some salt. And I want to take a look and kind of look at the bottom and see almost all of our moisture has been absorbed. I want to taste. So I'm going to take a piece of bread. Yeah, that's about, wow, that's really good. You can taste the bacon in there. That's about perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this burner off. And take a break for a couple minutes. I wanna actually cool this down a little bit before I stuff our bird. If I wasn't gonna cook our bird immediately, I would wanna cool it down completely before I put it in the bird, okay? But I am gonna cook this bird as soon as we get back, but I'm gonna let it hang a little bit so it's not gonna hurt my hands. Uh, and then we'll get going on our cider donuts and our grilled cheese. All right, welcome back. So I pulled our crostinis out of the oven because they were about ready. I took the liberty of going ahead and stuffing our chicken just for the sake of time because we're, we're doing some real cooking on this show today. But I wanted to show it to you. I stuffed the heck out of it. There's nothing wrong with having some of the stuffing fall out of your chicken. I seasoned inside the chicken real well with salt and pepper, seasoned the outside. And I also tucked the little wing tips underneath. That's just gonna help the little wing tips from not burning. I'm gonna go ahead and stick these in our oven. Stick this in our oven. Now, you want to cook your chicken so that the flesh is 165. You want the stuffing to also at least reach that because it is a stuffed product. Uh, so the cooking time is going to vary. That's about a two pound bird. I'm expecting it's going to take about a half an hour or so to cook. So our, our apple and onion confit is cooking really nicely here. We're just getting a very little bit of browning. But I want to add a little something else to it. So we're going to add a little bit of rum. Now, if you're working on a gas stove, you want to make sure you pull your pan away before you add your rum. Because it'll actually release vapors up into the air. And those vapors are super flammable if they get in contact with the open flame. Yeah, that's a good time right there. Now, you can see in this pan, this is finished. So this was our two cups of apple cider. It's cooked all the way down and it's about a quarter of a cup. In our next segment, we're gonna go ahead and put our cider donuts together. Before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and build our grilled cheese sandwich. So I'm gonna take our loaf of sourdough bread here, cut some slices. Now, if you want a really thick sandwich, cut your bread thicker. I don't, I wanna be able to get a lot of bacon, a lot of apple, a lot of my cheese, so I'm not gonna have my bread too thick. We're gonna make two sandwiches. So we'll cut that, move this off to the side. And then we're gonna cut our apple. Now I want apples to just kind of lay on there. So I'm gonna go around the core. And you can see I peeled this apple. I would definitely suggest peeling it if you're going to cut it like this, because you don't wanna have one slice have all that skin on there, because they will cook a little bit and you don't want it to get stuck in your teeth essentially. All right, so I'm gonna spread our bread out, open it up kind of how I would how I'm going to put it back together. I cut the top off of a wheel of brie that's at room temperature. I'm going to remove that. I'm just going to scoop out some of this brie. Now look at that. Oh, wonderful soft cheese. Now it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be brie. There's a, a number of soft cheeses you could use. If you like one that's got a little more punch to it, get one with a little more punch. But this brie is going to work really well because it's not it's not going to be an overpowering cheese. It's gonna be pretty mellow and I think it'll go well with the mellow flavor of our apples. The bacon's a little assertive, but we're not gonna overdo it with the bacon. So use as much or as little as you want. 
but the brie is actually going to play a really important role here. It's going to protect our bread from any moisture that comes out of our apples. All right, so we want to go like that. We're just going to simply lay our apples right on top. Looks like I need a little more apple. So I'll go ahead and do part of an apple. Actually, we can use this apple real quick. And these thin strips of apple aren't going to make much of a difference for us. Thin, thin strips of skin, I should say. And then we're going to put our bacon right in the middle. So we'll just lay our bacon right in there like so. So we have to be even, so there's five strips, so we better put it half and half. Now you want to try to carefully put your sandwich back together. And you can squish it down a bit. And we're going to take into our pan that's got a little bit of butter in it. I just have it warm enough to melt at this point. I'll warm it up a little bit more once I get our sandwiches in there. We'll flip this right on top. Oh, this is awesome. Very, very excited about this. All right, gently stick this right in here. All right, so we've got our grilled cheeses going. Our confit is just about done here. Most of that rum we put in has evaporated. We've reduced down our chicken's cooking. We're gonna take a break for a minute. I'm gonna have all the stuff set up and we're gonna make some apple cider donuts. All right, welcome back. So our chicken's roasting nicely in the oven. Our confit is all done. I pulled it off the heat to let it cool down. I don't want it screaming hot when we go, to head, go ahead and put it on our crostini. You can see over here, our grilled cheeses, they're cooking nice and slowly. I want to make sure our apples get a chance to cook just a little bit. They were, went in raw and I just want them to warm up. I have some oil in a pan here. So we're going to deep fry our donuts because why would you eat donuts if you didn't deep fry them? But you want to be super careful when you deep fry at home. So what, I have a candy thermometer in here and I'm looking for about 370 or so degrees for our donuts. And I have a fair amount of room on top. Of, on the top of this pan so that when I put it in, if they splatter a little bit, it's not going to shoot all over the place. Hopefully not on me. So I'm going to make our batter really quick. So I have our things already weighed out here, measured. So I'm going to add some cinnamon, baking powder, nutmeg, baking soda, and some salt. I have to come and check out our website to get the actual recipe for all this but it, this one's well worth coming to get. So I want to mix that around a little bit just to incorporate those together. I'm going to add about four cups of flour. Now I say about because each time you make this recipe or a lot of recipes like this, when you're making a, a dough or a, a kind of a batter type product, you have to play with the thickness of it a little bit to get it exactly where you want. So this is good. I'm going to remove this off to the side just for a moment here. Then in this bowl here, I have about two ounces of softened butter and about a cup of sugar. And what I want to do is I want to take both of these and I want to just mix them together really well. They call this creaming like you would do if you're making, um, if you're making chocolate chip cookies, some sort of cookie. So we're not going to do it quite as much because I'm doing it by hand and I'm going to get tired. But you want to incorporate your butter and sugar relatively well. One of the nice things about this recipe is it, it's not a huge amount and it's not super labor intensive. So you can totally use a blender if you have a blender. But if you don't have a blender, you can do it by hand just like we're doing here. So you want to go just until you can't see any difference between your butter and your sugar. All right, now I want to check the temperature here. All right, we're pretty hot, so I'm going to turn this down and let that actually just hang out right there. Now the next step we want to do here is we're going to add our two eggs to this wet. One, two, like so. Actually, we want to incorporate those kind of one at a time. And here goes our second one. Now while we were gone, I also took one apple and grated it. And I'm going to go ahead and add that grated. I just used a regular box grater. 
and that's going to give a little bit of texture to our dough. It's going to add some more moisture too. But depending on the size of your apple, depending on the variety of apple, that's going to add more or less moisture, which is another reason why you want to, uh, you don't have to be super specific on the amount of flour that you add. Now a couple things we're going to do here, we are going to add about four ounces of milk. And we're going to add four ounces of sour cream. Actually, that's, that's only three and a half. There you go, that's four. So we want to mix this together. Now you can see, if you look in here, that it's very loose. You can see some of the chunks of apple in there. Now we're going to go ahead and add all our dry ingredients right back to this. Now I'm going to switch from a whisk to a spoon because I don't want to get it all stuck. And remember we're making a donut here. We're not making some sort of a bread where we want to really develop gluten. We want this to be nice and soft. So you're only going to stir it as much as you need to to get it all incorporated. This is looking great. Now looking at this, it's a little bit on the wet side. So I'm going to add a little more flour. I'm going to shoot it all over my arm there. That's all right, because I'm going to have to get it on my hands in a second. All right. That's just about the thickness we're looking for. Enough that it'll kind of hold together without falling apart too, too much. Because I'm going to take the flour that I put all over my hands. We'll put it on our board here. Now we're going to take a break for a second. I'm going to dump this out on the board. I'm going to make it about an inch thick and go ahead and just cut them into sticks. We're going to go ahead and fry our donuts. Oh, you know what I forgot? Wow. I almost forgot our cider we worked so hard for. Let's go ahead and look how thick this is now. So that should have gone in with our wet ingredients. Not a big deal, but we are going to have to add a little bit more flour. So I'm going to go ahead and finish mixing this, add a little more flour, and we'll get ready to uh, show you some donuts, and we'll get Arthur up here and eat some wicked good food. Hey, Arthur. Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me back here at Hudson Appliance again. So I'm just finishing up our last dish, and for our guests at home who didn't see, I took our crostinis, put our really sharp cheddar cheese on there, and here this is a apple and onion confit. So they got cooked really slowly with some butter and some extra virgin olive oil. And so we're just going to put this on top. If you want to put a little spring of thyme on there or something, that'll give a nice little pop of color. I'll just do a few of these. So we've got those. Here's our nice roasted chicken. You can see the stuffing's just falling out of the top of this. That's the snacks for the kitchen. Always remember to make yourself snacks. But this is an apple and walnut and sage stuffing. Mm. So we use some apples in this grilled cheese that has brie and bacon as well. This mm. is gonna be a good time. But right here, I decided to cook them all. There's a mountain of apple cider donuts. We should probably give one of these a whirl. You wanna give it a try? Sure. So it should be a nice compliment. Very, very good. And then we got to try one of these before we, before we get out. Well, what do you think? Now that's wicked, wicked good. good. 